Hello and welcome to Indie Rebel VFX, Hollywood effects without a Hollywood budget. I am El Director, as I'm more commonly known on the internet. And if you've seen the course, you know I'm also Chris Temple. That's just the guy I pretend to be sometimes. But what I want to do today is I want to take a look at Blender and show you some visual effects uh, tricks and tips that can help speed up your workflow when you're trying to do composites and such. So here I have a scene that I have tracked. Uh, we've got Suzanne, right? And we're actually going to go ahead and drop her here. So let's go ahead and simulate this real quick just so we can get some uh, action going. So just a real simple simulation of a shot that I've already tracked. And we just drop her down and she bounces. And pretty simple, right? Cool. So the first thing I want to show you guys is uh, how to preview your animations. And there's a few ways we can go about doing this. Let's go ahead and load in a background image. So there is the actual shot that we used for it. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete the ground plane, or not delete it, but just hide it right now. So that's this tracks plane right there. So now we've got her dropping like that. Now another trick I can do is come over here under display and check only render. And then I'm gonna hit A to unselect it. And now we have Suzanne just sitting here bouncing around in the shot like that. And what we can do is we can actually now render this out really, really quickly and take a look at it and see what it's going to do. So I'm going to come into here and we're just going to use this monkey sequence and then delete the number there for the file name. Cause I'm just going to overwrite stuff I've already done. And now we go ahead and make sure that's RGB. We'll just do normal RGB. We don't need the A right now. And then this is the button not many people know about, this little clapperboard right here, this movie slate. It will render the viewport to this directory as whatever I have set this up as right here. Now I just need to go really low res at the moment. So we'll go 8-bit color, PNG, RGB, no alphas or anything like that. I'm going to overwrite what I've already done and uh, just check this box. And now you can see it's actually rendering this out for me. And this is super, super helpful. And you can see it's rendering very quickly too. If I was doing this as the animated cycles render on my little laptop that we're doing this on, we're probably looking at a three hour render just for this 129 frames or whatever, because you're doing reflections and things like that. And we'll show you that here in a minute. But to just check the animation on something and make sure that your track is working good, that the object is sticking, that it appears to be where you want it to be, this is a lot faster and uh, actually works out quite well. All right, so that is done. Now I'm going to open up a program called HefeCheck. This is, again, completely free. We don't need to worry about that. And then we bring up our file browser. And uh, we just drag them right here into the viewer. Press F to fit the frame. And then drag this arrow all the way to the end to make sure it's going to cache up the entire shot. I don't know why it starts in the middle like that uh, with that one arrow. Like, it won't cache the whole thing. It's kind of dumb. But anyway... Boom, everything's buffered up, and now I can play this back in real time with my background and just see how everything looks here. And that's looking pretty good. I'd be happy with that. Now, this is good for your initial motion preview. So you're checking the animation, you were making sure everything's integrating well. But, you know, I shot this on my T2i with kind of a, a log picture style, a little bit flatter, using the stuff from Vision Tech, Vision Color. And so what I want to do now is actually render the same thing just like we did, but with a transparent background. And then I can composite it in Natron uh, with some LUTs applied to things and just kind of see how it actually is going to be more well integrated into the shot. So let's go ahead and do that. So we just bounce back over here to Blender, escape out of this image viewer, and again, only render, but this time I'm going to render the, uh, let's see, I want to turn off the background image and then check RGBA. We'll go 16 this time, really doesn't matter, but we'll just do that. And this time, if I hit the clapperboard, you can see Suzanne is being rendered with an alpha channel. Now this render is not as fast as the first one we did, but because I have an alpha, I can actually composite this over the footage that's got let's apply to it and things like that. And we'll be able to, to check this out here in our compositor. So this is actually extremely helpful. And again, not a whole lot longer than the simple Blender composited version that we looked at earlier. Okay, so that is now done. Let's go ahead and escape out of here. And uh, I'm actually just going to save what I've done and we're gonna close out Blender. And we close it out on my other window. 
because I don't want to have multiple things running at once here when I run Natron. I like typically having one effects a RAM heavy program open at a time. It just makes things a lot more stable. So Natron, for those of you who have seen the course, you should already be familiar with this. If you haven't already, um, check out, I've got a few videos, the first three videos from the Indie Rebel course. Um, I'll link to them in the, into the description, but you'll find them on my channel. Uh, no, we don't want to restore the autosave. And what you can do then is basically uh, learn how to set up your software to match mine. And uh, just kind of, I've got one video where we walk you through how to composite with nodes and Natron. But right now, we're not going to spend the time on that because I have an entire course on it. And uh, you'll also find a link in the description for the actual Indie Rebel course. And if you use the coupon code, uh, let's do Indie RBL. So I N D I E R B L at checkout, you'll save 40%, and uh, you can get it for 30 bucks instead of 50. And that's my way of saying thank you for checking out the video. So let's see, where is the shot? Here it is. We're using the still version. Always bring in your background plate first because that will set the the frames and everything for your scene. Now if I go ahead and look at this. Again, it's kind of washed out, so we're going to do our log to linear conversion. Again, I do talk about this in the course. Drop that down and play it up. So that just looks a lot better now than what we had right there. And now we can go ahead and bring in Suzanne. And uh, let's see, that should be here in render tests. And we want the one from today, which is that one. And we'll just merge it into the shot. Come on, there it goes. View it, full screen, and let's play it. All right, and that's looking like that's integrated pretty well. Don't worry about those flash frames, there's some uh, extra stuff going on with it. But I'm liking, I'm liking this a lot. So now that I'm here inside of Natron too, I could do some more compositing at this point, or if you're in a, uh, a pipeline with a bunch of other people, they can be now go about compositing the rest of the shot with the stand-in, while then you go back and tweak the skin settings and actually do the real render. So this is extremely helpful. And again, to kick this out only took about a minute or two, as opposed to the couple hours it would take to actually generate a final render from this. So let's go ahead and pause that here, and we'll go back to our dual window. There we go. And uh, so just to show you too what I mean, like with the compositing side of things, I could, you know, if I wanted to come in here, we'll add blurs. And then because we did shoot this on a T2i, so maybe we decide that, oh, we need to blur it by like two pixels. And, you know, that softens it up a little bit, helps it match a little bit more. So as the compositor, I could be going in if I need to, you know, add an explosion now at some point, I now know where the monkey is in the frame to add the explosion. So this is extremely helpful. And again, you can also be doing this. If you've got multiple computers, you can now have one computer rendering your final animation while you come back in here and start doing some compositing. And then when you're done, you can just come in and swap out your animation for the final one as simple as this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move this over here. We're gonna disconnect it. I'm going to read in a final shot that I actually rendered last night and have not looked at this yet. So hopefully this works. And we can drop this in. And so now you can see we've got a much more final version of Suzanne that's been rendered. She's got reflections on her. Uh, I did kind of a candy paint thing. And I also was experimenting with Blender 2.7's, uh, or 2.79's Shadow Catcher. And so you can see a little bit of that down there. If we just kind of scrub through, yeah, Suzanne appears. She comes down and drops. Same animation as before. It's exactly the same thing. If I flip between this and that, you can see the monkey's in the same spot but this monkey took three hours to render the whole animation and this one took less than three minutes. So that's a big trick for speeding up your uh, compositing workflow. Definitely something I wanna show you guys. Now, let's go ahead and close out a Natron. I'll discard the changes, we don't need to worry about that. And I'm gonna relaunch Blender again and I wanna show you one other trick that's extremely helpful when you're dealing with motion tracking and stuff like that. Okay, so here we are back in our little test thing that we did. We'll turn that back off like that. And I want to select the camera. Here's something very interesting. Um, the way Blender works with its cameras and things like that is that it allows you to, once you've tracked the shot, if I can find my camera here, where are you? 
Oh, it's really, really tiny. Um, but I could actually rotate it and stuff like that and reposition it to help align my shot better. And I actually did that earlier when I was aligning the floor. Here are the shots. I had these few markers for the floor, and then I had like the back wall and stuff like that too, which you can see with these two back there. And um, I think the wall actually even came to this as well. But this was my floor that I was most concerned about. But let's say that the track was good but it's not good enough maybe i had a track error of like 1.3 and i just couldn't get it below that one pixel threshold so here's what you can do you select your camera go to your constraints and constrain to f curve now if you look down here you'll see all these keyframes have appeared and if i go to my graph editor i can actually now let's go ahead and is that normalized ah, there we go i can view what the camera is actually doing now over time and there are actually some jumps on here, so this is good. This is good to show you guys. So what I do is I shut these all off, and I go through one by one, and I start turning stuff on. So this is a little bit jerky, right? And let's see if we have any really bad ones. This is a handheld shot, too, so I am expecting some jerkiness, but there shouldn't be a whole lot taking place. But this would be like an ideal example. So if this was like a, a smoother, steady cam shot, and I was seeing points like this on here, right, where they're up and down and all over the place, select them. And this is the cool trick. Go to key and smooth keys. And you can see it just instantly pulls out all that jerkiness that was going on. And if I turn on these as well, I'm going to turn off Z because I've already done that. Let's go ahead and just smooth those out as well. Key, smooth keys. That's looking a lot better there. And then let's take a look at our rotations. Rotations are looking pretty good. I'm not going to mess with those. Turn those all back on. And we go back to our 3D view. Back to here. And uh, let's go ahead and spit this out one more time. Uh, we'll just do the, the low quality one. So I'm going to make sure that I check only render. And I'm not, let's see, I want my world background this time. Yeah, there we go. And hit that. So the reason why I'm showing you with the smooth out camera now, even though the shot didn't require it, the shot was tracked great before because I want to show you what this actually does now and that in this case it actually would ruin the shot. So let's open up Hefe Check again. And we hit done. Go to here. Pull in our file. Fit it. Actually I'm going to make this full screen for you guys because I really want you to, to see what I'm looking at here. So this is going to buffer up. Now before, remember our track was perfect. Everything looked good. It was well integrated. But because now I've smoothed those keyframes on this really shaky handheld shot that was not smooth to begin with, our footage is not smooth, um, it actually jacks up the track. So let's go ahead and play this now. And you can see it's, it's slipping a little bit. It's not quite as locked in as it was before. You see it especially right here at the end. Watch this. See how it's all jittery all over the place? And that's because it wasn't a smooth shot to begin with. Now, if I'd shot this on my Steadicam or a dolly or something like that, and I'm just, I'm not getting the track error down to where I want it to be, smooth those keyframes and it works wonders. I do this all the time at work and it's just, it's incredible the way it works. And it just really gets me from like a 1.3 and I can get basically the equivalent of like a 0.5, which is really, really good to have. So anyway, those are just a few simple basic tips on a, uh, Working with Blender in a VFX pipeline, spitting out your, your animations here quickly with the uh, the checkbox down here. We open it back up using the, here we go, the uh, render active viewport, which is this right here. That's extremely helpful. And um, again, smoothing the keyframes and also by coming in and, you know, unselecting your background images when you have a transparent background selected down here under film, you select transparent getting an alpha channel so then you can run it into your compositor they can be working on their stuff once you have final animation and you can now come back and start tweaking your properties and your materials and do all your renders and stuff without holding up everyone else that's behind you in the pipeline so once again i'm l director this has been indie rebel vfx thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and heck why not even share it too take care we'll see you next time